Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at this little box. All techs, you say. Does that mean lasers, transporters, flying cars, GMOs, nuclear bombs, portal guns, and all other technologies that can possibly be conceived of by man, woman, or Wookiee? Unfortunately, no. It just means all the medieval technologies already present in the game, which you've played with hundreds of times already, except for a bunch that get taken away. More accurately, we should rename it some techs, objectively more than you normally have access to, but also missing some of your favorites and probably makes your civilization weaker, but so is everyone else's, so everything is more balanced than ever. Or is it? This video is all about answering that last question. Let's check it out. To state it simply, all techs gives you access to the entire tech tree, from Eagle Warrior and Paladin to Bombard Tower and Battle Elephant. That probably sounds pretty good to people who like to mix and match with different counters, though on the other hand it comes with the criticism that it makes all of the civilizations start to feel exactly the same. Adding to that and to prevent things from getting out of hand, it's balanced by taking away all civ bonuses and team units, like the Genitour, Imperial Skirmisher, and Condottiero. That means no economy, military, or team bonuses of any kind. That might sound like all civilizations are identical, and picking a civilization is just choosing your favorite architecture and voice acting. That's not quite the case though, and it's still worth thinking about your choice. The first reason is your scout is based on your civilization. As I've talked about before, the Eagle Scout has some significant upside in terms of line of sight and scouting rate, so the American civilizations automatically have an early advantage. Another factor to weigh is that Incas also still get their Slinger instead of the Hand Cannoneer. Remember the Slinger is available one age earlier, costs less, and has more accuracy than the Hand Cannoneer, though it also has a lower base attack. Likewise, the Spanish still have their missionary, and the Vikings have the longboat, and Koreans have their turtle ship. Probably the most intriguing one like that though, is the Indians still get the Imperial Camel at the stable. They're missing the plus one camel armor and extra attack against buildings, so in most cases you'll probably stick with the Paladin, but it never hurts to have the option of an extra upgrade. The most blatantly unfair advantage for a civilization that I've found isn't actually a unit though. It's the fact that the Portuguese still get the Faderia. If the all text game mode ever picks up in popularity, I'm pretty sure this one's gonna get patched out relatively quickly. Of course, ignoring those civilizations that manage to hold on to a special unit or building, the main difference between the civilizations is that even though your unique techs and bonuses are gone, unique units are still there. This opens up the possibility for speculation about how a full tech tree is going to interact with each of those units. For example, let's think about the Britons. This means you now have to face elite longbowmen with thumb ring. The big catch is that they don't have their 12 range anymore, since that was thanks to a Civ bonus. They actually revert to having a generic 9 range, basically becoming a slightly better version of an Arbalest. Don't feel too badly for them, they've had this coming for a long time, just ask the Siege Onagers. It's a similar sort of thing for other civilizations, like Franks and their Paladins. They do get bloodlines, but they also lose their extra HP bonus. So they actually get worse and are now identical to everyone else's. Aztecs also now get Halberdier, but without their plus four infantry attack. There's lots of other examples, but I think you get the idea. Really, we should think about it in terms of who has the best unique unit that doesn't rely on a Civ bonus. Now that's still an interesting question. The Persians come to mind, since the War Elephant is technically the strongest unique unit by stats. It loses a bit of speed from lacking a Civ bonus, but you can pick up Heresy now, undermining their intended weakness to monks. Byzantines are an interesting one, since they normally lack Blast Furnace and Bloodlines, so their cataphracts arguably improve from all techs, though it's not clear cut since it's at the cost of their trample damage. Both 1 vs 1 and in larger, more compact groups, the all techs cataphract wins, even without trample damage. Bear in mind the upgrades are also much cheaper, giving you a better unit for less. 
On the other hand, some great unique units suddenly become not so great. Mangadai lose their faster attack bonus from being cavalry archers, Huskarls can't be built at super speed from barracks, plumed archers are significantly more expensive, and Janissaries and Berserks both lose a lot of HP. Overall, I'd say the majority of unique units take a bit of a hit in some way, considering they're often the target of unique techs and benefit from bonuses in one way or another. In the end, I think we can say that some Altex civilizations are better than others, but overall the differences between civilizations is minimized. Any comparison between civilizations just becomes a comparison between unique units or the result of oversights about a unit or building that wasn't taken away. In my mind, the biggest winners from all techs are Portuguese, Saracens, Spanish, and Incas. The biggest losers from all techs are civilizations that lose their great bonuses that normally put them in the top tier. You could consider the Huns or Aztecs in that group. Other civilizations that lose out are ones with a particularly great combination of their unique unit and strong economy, like the Mayans or the Mongols. One last thing about all techs I want to mention is I was playing around in the scenario editor and saw the full tech tree option. If you enable that option, you actually keep the bonuses and expanded tech tree, which means you can get those fabled Frank Paladins with bloodlines or any of those other overpowered unique unit combinations I speculated on earlier. If you save a scenario with that feature enabled, it even works without selecting all techs in the game settings. Personally, I find it interesting how rarely people play all techs. Sometimes it's nice to mix things up and see unusual combinations like Eagle Warriors and Hand Cannons, even if it's just for novelty's sake. What I'm trying to say is consider trying an all text game next time you're online. But that's all for this one. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you next time.